Someone came to our house saying Emma didn't pay for a $3,000 meal at a fancy restaurant, said a chef. He looked serious. But that couldn't be true. Emma wouldn't do that. I stood firm against them, even though they seemed angry. I'm Layla. I'm 30 years old, and I live with my husband Daniel and our daughter Emma, I said confidently. I remembered a time when I was tricked by an ex-boyfriend who took $3,000 from me. When I found out I was pregnant with his child, I tried to contact him, but he disappeared. I was alone with little money, but I decided to keep Emma. Then, unexpectedly, my ex-boyfriend was arrested. The man who told me was Daniel, who is now my husband. Daniel helped me a lot when I was tired from dealing with my ex-boyfriend's mess. Even though he was older than me, I was drawn to Daniel because he was strong and dependable. I was worried about being divorced and whether anyone would accept me, but Daniel did. Now, we have a great relationship, and even his parents like me. We're leading a happy life together. One day, Daniel's parents called me. It's been a while, and we'd love for you to visit. We miss seeing our grandchild. My mother-in-law said warmly, they really care for Emma, even though she's not their biological granddaughter, which makes me very happy. Sure, I'll let Daniel know, I replied. My mother-in-law thanked me cheerfully, and we ended the call. It takes about five hours to get to my in-law's house from where we live in a city. Their place is in the countryside, where everything seems to move more slowly. When my husband comes home in the evening, I tell him about the message from his parents right away. I haven't taken any vacation yet this month. Let's take some time off and go visit them. I'll ask my boss if we can have a few days off in a row, Daniel suggests. Thankfully, his boss agrees, and we start looking forward to seeing his parents after a long time. But on the day we're supposed to visit, Daniel suddenly has to work. You go ahead. I'll join you as soon as I'm done. It might be late, maybe even tomorrow morning, Daniel says. With that, he sends us off and heads to the office. I quickly let my in-laws know about the change of plans, and then my daughter and I set off on our own. When we get to my in-laws' house, they welcome us warmly, and we have a really nice time there. They're excited for Daniel to come too. The next morning, my in-laws head to the barn like they usually do. I offered to help, but they insisted I should relax and enjoy my visit, so I stayed back at the house. Suddenly, the doorbell rings. It's too early for Daniel to be here. Thinking it might be a neighbor, I quickly go to answer it. I'm coming, I say as I open the door. And there's a man in his seventies standing there, looking really angry. Then he says, I own a steakhouse nearby. Your daughter ate there and left without paying. You owe me three thousand dollars. His words took me by surprise and I blinked in shock. He went on to explain what happened. Apparently, a young girl came to his store the night before. He warned her that his place was too expensive for her. But she went in anyway and racked up a bill of three thousand dollars on food and drinks. Then she left without paying. She's your daughter, and as her parent, you should cover the bill, he insisted. I tried to explain, but he was too upset to listen and kept demanding payment. Excuse me, what's your name? I need to ask my parents-in-law if they know you, I told him. Shouldn't you be more worried about paying me first? Ethan snapped back. Yes, but could you please wait a moment? I asked him to wait and quickly called my in-laws to check. They responded promptly, revealing something astonishing. Trying to hide my surprise, I looked at the man in front of me. I, I can't pay you, I said. What are you saying? You don't care if my business suffers. If you don't pay, I'll call the police. Ethan exclaimed. But hold on. I believe there's a misunderstanding, I pleaded. There's no room for misunderstanding. I made sure to ask for her name when she ate, Ethan said firmly, reaching for his phone to call the police. A policeman happened to walk by, and the steakhouse owner called him over to explain the situation. The officer frowned and looked at me sternly, saying, Can I talk to you for a moment? I felt confused and unsure how to handle the officer's intimidating stare. Your daughter is suspected of dining and dashing. If things remain unresolved, we'll have to arrest her, he said, insisting that I hand over my daughter immediately. No, there's been a mistake. My daughter wouldn't do that. I protested, but the officer remained firm. The steakhouse owner then said, If you insist, I'll make a concession. I'm not heartless. Since we're neighbors, if you can pay, I'll let it go. Ethan, are you sure about this? I questioned. Oh, it's no big deal to me. She's just a young girl. I knew she couldn't afford it from the start, but she still wanted to try my food. 
Isn't that flattering? Ethan chuckled. The police officer's expression softened, and he gave me a suggestion. Ethan is offering you a way out. Why not pay the $3,000 for the food and drinks? He hasn't officially reported it yet, so you won't face charges. I declined anyway. As I started to explain, the steakhouse owner's face turned red with anger, and he shouted, You're rejecting my kindness. Is this how you raise your daughter? Don't play games with me. Please, calm down. Why are you refusing to pay? If you don't, your daughter could really end up getting arrested. The police officer asked me, looking puzzled. I can't just agree to this, I replied, feeling uneasy. As I spoke, the steakhouse owner laughed. Apologies? Oh, I see. You're saying you don't have $3,000 with you right now? My mistake. As we get older, we tend to forget things. While we do take credit cards at our restaurant, if you trust me with your card, I can handle the payment and give it back to you later. How about that? He said, suggesting I get my wallet. I refused, explaining that it was too risky to give my credit card to someone else. I offered to go with him to make the payment instead. However, the steakhouse owner threatened me, raising his fist and shouting, Don't you trust me? I work with credit every day. Watch what you say, or you'll regret it. Why can't I come along? I questioned, but the steakhouse owner erupted in anger once more. Because you're disrespecting me. Let me make this clear. I have connections with influential organizations in this area. If you can't pay up, I can still ensure you pay $3,000 through my connections. That's why I've involved a police officer to handle this properly, he continued his tirade, leaving me stunned. I wondered if it was appropriate for him to say such things with a police officer present. Glancing at the officer, I saw him pretending not to listen, avoiding eye contact. Excuse me, you're a police officer, right? Did you hear that? This sounds like a threat, doesn't it? Is this acceptable? When I turned to the police officer for help, he seemed troubled and avoided my gaze. I didn't hear anything. Look, if you pay the money, this can all be resolved, Layla. Please comply. I couldn't believe what I was hearing from a police officer. Stunned, I listened as the steakhouse owner resumed his threats with harsh words. Most people would feel hopeless facing such pressure and might just pay up to end it. But I couldn't give in. Aren't police officers supposed to protect citizens? Why are you taking their side? I pleaded desperately, but the officer remained silent refusing to engage. The police officer is saying the same thing. So what will you do? Decide. Are you still refusing to pay? Don't underestimate me just because I'm old, the steakhouse owner warned, glaring at me. It's not that I'm underestimating them. It's just hard to believe. That's why I'm standing my ground. But they won't even let me explain. I thought to myself, feeling frustrated. While pondering my next move, a taxi pulled up in front of our house. My husband stepped out, looking puzzled. What's going on? Who are these people? He asked, confused. Is this your husband? You need to take responsibility. Let me explain, the police officer said, briefing my husband Daniel. Daniel looked at me, surprised. As I frowned in confusion, Daniel seemed to grasp the situation and gave me a playful smile. I've always loved his playful side. Sorry for the confusion. My apologies. By the way, officer, which department are you from? Do you have a badge? Taken aback by my husband's sudden assertiveness, the police officer hesitated before pulling out his badge from his pocket. Hmm, this looks fake. What's going on here? The police officer started to sweat nervously. Daniel chuckled and said, just joking. Hearing my husband's words, the officer awkwardly forced a smile. Then Daniel asked him about his department and rank. Do you really need to know that? Just curious, can you tell me? Daniel replied, I'm a constable stationed at the police box. I haven't seen you around. Are you new here? Thanks for your service, Daniel said appreciatively. Yes, I'm new here. Would it be all right if I contacted your station? Can I use the name on your badge, Rayan Martin? My husband asked, pulling out his phone. But the police officer quickly grabbed his hand. Before that, let's talk about the issue with Ethan. Can you tell me if he can pay or not? The officer pressed my husband for an answer. Ethan seemed completely thrown off by my husband's confidence and his earlier intensity had faded. You're responsible as the husband, right? He asked. Yes, but I don't have a job that pays that much, my husband replied casually. Oh well, Daniel shrugged. One last thing, can you provide me with your gun's serial number? What? 
Why do you need that? It's not something I can just give out, my husband replied. Well, that can't be. Knowing the number is a common verification method. It's important, Daniel said with a serious expression, while the police officer looked puzzled and asked, Is that true? Observing their reactions, my suspicion turned into certainty. They were definitely working together. Anyway, can I share my thoughts on this Dine and Dash incident? My husband asked, giving them a stern look. They seemed confused by his unexpected question. In conclusion, you're not a real cop trying to scam us with that guy over there, right? My husband accused, leaving them both stunned. Do you have any proof? The police officer demanded. Yeah, show me the evidence that I'm lying, my husband challenged. Lee, bring her over, my husband instructed me. I hurried to the back and returned with our precious one-year-old daughter in my arms, positioning her in front of the two men to show that she couldn't possibly be involved. Daniel stood protectively in front of us. My daughter is only one year old. She can't even walk, let alone dine and dash, I explained. The two men looked shocked, their mouths hanging open. That's not possible. Is this child really Aria Taylor? Ethan, the steakhouse owner, exclaimed. Of course she is. I'm only 30 years old. When else would I have had my first child? I retorted. Ethan seemed visibly unsettled and took a step back, exchanging a glance with the police officer, who nodded in response. Oh, it looks like there's been a mistake. Sorry for the confusion. The police officer and Ethan started to leave, but Daniel intervened, blocking their path. I stepped back to watch from the doorway. Could you let me through, please? Ethan requested. No, we're not letting you go. You might be scammers, and we won't stand for it. Don't try to intimidate me. I'm a police officer. If you don't move, I'll arrest you for obstructing an investigation. The officer threatened, trying to push past Daniel, but Daniel skillfully blocked his path. I apologize for not introducing myself sooner. I'm Daniel Taylor, chief inspector of the New York Investigation Division. Daniel announced, pulling out his genuine police badge from his pocket, shining brightly. You're a liar. I'm the real deal, the officer insisted. Whether you're real or not doesn't matter. You've committed fraud, haven't you? It's disgraceful for a police officer. Do you understand what the investigation division does? Daniel questioned sternly. What? You don't know what the investigation division is? Daniel asked incredulously. The investigation division handles serious crimes like fraud, embezzlement, counterfeit money, election violations, financial crimes, defamation, and high-tech crimes. In other words, it deals with criminals like you, Daniel explained firmly. He swiftly took out handcuffs and began to arrest the two. They couldn't resist his professional demeanor and were quickly apprehended. Daniel then called for backup. I've caught frosters in the act. This is outside my jurisdiction. Please send officers from the appropriate area here immediately. The two scammers' faces turned pale upon hearing Daniel's words. Please forgive us. We were desperate for money. This is our first offense. Please let us go, they pleaded. Just then, my in-laws arrived with the police. Are you all right? Sorry we're late. This guy couldn't explain things properly, whatever. Oh, you're here too. What a relief, my in-laws said, pulling me and our daughter into a hug. I had been on edge the whole time, but now I could finally relax and breathe a sigh of relief as the two scammers were loaded into a police car. Initially, I thought the old man was the only fraudster. When I called my in-laws, I asked if they knew a man named Ethan in the neighborhood. They didn't recognize the name, and since they've lived here for a long time and know everyone around, it was clear that Ethan didn't exist here. More importantly, my daughter is only one year old. She couldn't possibly have dined and dashed. Although I hadn't directly asked my in-laws to call the police, they understood my situation and decided to bring the police. When I realized I had to keep the man here until then, I was quite tense, but I made up my mind to protect my daughter. I had a feeling that something was off about the police officer who showed up. After talking to him for a while, I couldn't shake my distrust and couldn't forgive him. Though I didn't have proof at first, Daniel's questioning made me certain he was a fake officer. I felt lucky Daniel was there to handle things, but the thought of what could have happened if he wasn't made me break out in a cold sweat. I'm relieved it ended safely. With Daniel and the local officer's help, the case involving the Frosters was closed. During the investigation, many charges were lined up against them. Daniel shared the story with me afterward, looking both sad and angry.
It turned out the Frosters weren't part of any organization. Their faces became known nationwide thanks to the news. I stayed at my in-law's home for an extra day, thanks to their kindness and Daniel's consideration. The news of Daniel catching the Frosters spread quickly, and our neighbors brought over lots of delicious food, turning it into a party. Our daughter seemed to enjoy herself, not crying at all that night. I cherished the happiness in those moments, looking at her smiling face.